It says, ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. Right? The Lord says, ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. Um, you know, let's, um, let's pray along these lines and say, Lord, uh, this is what you promised in your word. And so we ask for the nations, we ask for the people um, in different nations, that they be uh, part of your kingdom, that they be saved, um, that they experience, uh, experience salvation, experience the love of Jesus. Um, nations who are in conflict, um, you know, right now, you know, we've read, we've been reading about Russia and Ukraine, and um, and some some there seems to be some progress uh, in the resolution of the conflict. So, uh, just reading the paper papers um, just a few minutes back, and the headlines talk about um, some at least some scope for discussion, scope for talks. So, uh, so that you know, needless lives need not be. Um, you know, put in danger, and uh, I mean, countless lives need not be put in danger, and needless casualties, you know, uh, should not happen. So, so let's pray and ask the Lord uh, to move among the nations. Let's ask for the Spirit of God to to just move to um, to change the hearts and lives of people. You know, like let there be a sovereign move of God. Let there be a sovereign, uh, you know, move of the Spirit in all these uh, nations, right? Let's, let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this word that uh, you said, ask of me. And so, Lord, as your, as your children, as your people, we come and, uh, Lord, we come asking in faith, Lord, and knowing this is something that is, uh, Lord, this is on your heart. The people, Lord, uh, in different nations, God, those who do not know you yet, and those who are in conflict because of lack of peace, Lord, within themselves, God, and uh, Father God, we ask, Lord, um, that, Lord, we pray that, um, Lord, let many come to know you as Lord and Savior. We ask, oh, Father God, that, uh, Lord, uh, from every tribe, from every language, from every uh, nation, and, Lord, um, I pray, God, from every geographical nation and even, Lord, uh, people groups, Lord, that many will come to know you as Lord and Savior. Father, we ask for an outpouring of your Spirit. Lord, let uh, the river... Of, of life flow in these nations. Let the church uh, rise up and take its place. Let all the believers, Lord, rise up and take their place, Lord, as uh, as people of influence, oh God, influencing for the good through their lives and through the, Lord, intentional sharing of the gospel. Lord, I pray that, um, Lord, that the lives will be lives of integrity and purity and holiness, Lord, and not of compromise, so that people will see a difference and uh, see the love, Lord, and uh, and be drawn to you, Father God, and see the, um, the fruit of the gospel, Lord, in their own lives, Lord, the fruit of the work of the Spirit in their own lives, God, and, and be drawn to that, O oh Master. Uh, Lord, we, we commit um, these uh, nations into your mighty hands, God, especially pray for the nations that are at war right now, and conflict, and um, Lord, and uh, the bloodshed happening, violence, Lord, we pray that everything will come to an end, Father God, that you will bring these things to an end, Father God. Let there be peaceful resolution, God. Um, Father, we pray that you'll protect the lives of people, O oh Master, God. Let, um, Lord, let there be no um, not needless uh, violence, O oh Father God. Uh, and we pray that all this will come to an end, Master. Yes, Lord, we, we come at this into your mighty hands, even as we declare, God, that you are the Lord, uh, of all, uh, that you are the King of kings and Lord of lords, and uh, your kingdom is a kingdom, Lord, which is uh, which does not have an end, God, and it's, it is eternal, and your kingdom rules over all. And Father, we, we ask for the rule and reign of your kingdom, Lord, over the nations of the earth, Lord. We thank you. We, we, we just ask this in your precious name. Amen. Okay, so... I hope you guys are doing good. We'll continue with um, where we left off, discipleship in small group. Okay. okay we started by looking at um, the last section, right? Um, that is 
raising up disciples, reproducing leaders. That is the last section in in this course. Um, so, what we saw last class was, uh, you know, before just winding up, was about church leadership. Right, that leadership in the church is very very key, or crucial. Um, to the growth of the church, both in terms of um, numbers and also in terms of uh, uh, in terms of um, you know the the lives being built up. Right? Uh, when you say a strong church, um, it 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 does not mean necessarily the the number of people there. You know, there is one factor because that means that the church is reaching out and people are being saved. People are being yeah, people are being planted in the church. Right? It's one factor. The other, the other thing is also when we say a church is uh, strong, a church is uh, you know being a church of influence is also the fact that uh, the church is uh, building up the lives of people. Right, the lives of people are being built up. The people are being made strong. They are um, what we have been studying that they are being uh, you know made strong, and uh, they do not remain as um, as baby Christians, right? They don't remember. They don't remain as uh, uh, spiritual babes in Christ, but they grow from strength to strength, and uh, they, you know, they go from just being believers to being disciples to ministers to leaders. Okay, so we're talking about raising up uh, leaders. Okay, so so leadership in the church is important. We saw that uh, you know uh, leaders are like pillars in the church. So the more leaders that are being raised up, the church will be stronger. Okay, and uh, the more leaders that are raised up, well, you have so many more people to to be, um, you know, spheres of influence, to be uh, able to lead others, to make the church strong, and to and to also raise up other leaders. So, you know, when that keeps happening, we see that the church is growing. Like people are growing, people are maturing, and people are leading. People are being sons and daughters. People are being mothers and fathers. Right? They are raising up another generation and yet another generation uh, in the kingdom of God. Okay. So, so the thing is to, um, like, um, like someone said, you know, success in ministry uh, depends on uh, you know, how we raise up successors okay so if we do not raise up successors now what is who is a successor one who you know uh, you know one who continues the work after you know uh, 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 maybe the leaders are gone one who continues that's a successor right so if there are no successors to continue the work then we cannot say that the ministry is successful you know because if the current um team of leadership is no more, right? They've passed away. Then there is no one else to continue the work. Then it means that the ministry was not very successful, right? It was it just lasted for some time, um, you know, and it, it should actually keep going till the Lord returns, right? Um, so, so that's the thing. So, so the leadership must be committed to church to growing the church okay so like we said when we say grow the church it's not just adding people to the church but also adding strength uh, or making people uh, come to a place of maturity who are already in the church okay so both have to go hand in hand so we cannot just focus on one thing and leave out the other okay so uh, uh, the church leadership should be committed to this aspect to growing the church okay while there will be many things to do in every area of ministry let's say you know if it is uh, uh, if it is counseling ministry i'm sure that the you know the leaders there or the people in the team will be focused on bringing godly counsel and solving uh, you know uh, the kind of problems and bringing resolution to the the problems um, that people are facing. Well, that will be the primary thing. But at the same time, they should also be focusing on building up people, right? building up lives of people. So that is uh, extremely important. Uh, it's one of the key things uh, which will enable 
the church to be strong okay so let's uh, let me just share the notes and we look at <clears throat> how we can train our cell members to be uh, cell group uh, leaders right okay let me just share that okay So step one is <clears throat> developing relationships with the members of the cell group. Now, there could be 10, 12, 15 you know, members in the cell group. So developing relationships in the sense, going beyond just knowing, uh, knowing their name and what they do, going beyond that and uh, you know, developing a relationship, a strong, a healthy, relationship where um, uh, you know it should be healthy relationship in the sense <clears throat> people need to be brought to a place of strength so that they can walk with the lord uh, on their own they can come to a place now that's a healthy relationship you know, if if the members in a cell group are going to be always dependent on the leader for a lot of things they are, if you are going to be always depending on the leader, on the cell group leader, uh, you know, uh, then that's an unhealthy relationship. Like if they're going to be um, uh, taking a lot of the cell group leaders' time, they're going to be, you know, uh, uh, doing that, uh, then it's an unhealthy uh, relationship. But they need to be... Uh, uh, the, the cell group members need to be growing and come to a place of, well, standing on their own feet when it comes to uh, spiritual things, when it comes to the other aspects of life, right? They they need to do that. Okay, so a healthy relationship needs to be there between the cell group leader and, of course, the cell group members, okay? Now, uh, the other thing of... Um, uh, you know, uh, having a healthy relationship is also, um, you know, other aspects of like correction because we are growing the people. So, you know, um, communication of the truth with love. Now, these are some things that um, are foundational, right? So, which involves maybe, if, if, you know, if, if, if you see something that is, um, that is not uh, that is not right if you see something that is not uh, correct then obviously that needs to be there needs to be change there needs to be um uh, there needs to be correction right if that does not happen then there is no uh, then we can't say that okay there is a relationship but it is it's not a healthy relationship right where the where the leader is ignoring uh, this aspect of bringing correction which will be for the good of the cell member. Okay, so so many other aspects where we can say that uh, the relationship needs to be healthy. Okay, so so once that is established, then the cell leader can actually point or lead the people, lead the cell members towards. Um, uh, you know, when, when the cell leader sees that, okay, the members are ready, they've come to a place of maturity, um, to to really equip them, to train them to be leaders, okay? So they need to be raised up, they need to be trained in order to be leaders. So that's, you know, uh, it is both a formal and an informal thing, you know, like, uh, you know, it, it's good to have a formal training, where you, you know, when we say formal training, okay, we sit down and we talk about it, we have a set uh, format, we have a set things uh, to talk about, maybe the vision of the church, the vision of the cell group ministry, uh, what we should do as a cell group leader, what we should not do as a cell group leader. So to sit down and, and formally talk about it, right? And also informal in the sense, in the way we uh, you know, the way we do life itself, you know, maybe in informal settings, um, there are other things that that the uh, cell group leader is, you know, gets trained just by watching, just by observing, and, and also in informal settings, right? When we say informal setting, it could be over a meal, it could be over, you know, uh, uh, maybe 
some other activity which is apart from a, a cell group meeting right it could be a, so even in that there is a um, there's some way of equipping that's happening to the cell member so um to spend t- is, it, so it requires time right it requires uh, uh, spending time with a cell member so uh, so when we invite them when we invite them over when we invite them to the house and and uh, you know this is apart from a cell group meeting we're talking about right so then they will be able to uh, we will be able to know as a cell group leader we will be able to understand more about the cell members and and truly see whether they are ready to to take up leadership or even to be trained for leadership okay so we understand that so um so the key thing is to develop establish a healthy relationship with the cell members only then we'll be able to find out whether they are ready and we can also ask them we can set them on the path for uh, preparing them as uh, cell group leaders okay then um, the second one is to develop ministers out of members you know so we say okay we have friendship we have relationship etc um, how do we you know how do we develop their uh, heart for ministry is give them the opportunities to serve okay maybe it could be in the cell group itself where give them an opportunity uh, to to maybe lead a cell group meeting to give them an opportunity to maybe facilitate a cell group meeting um, you know maybe it is uh, to lead prayer to lead worship um, to you know so, some 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 kind of relation i mean um, a responsibility an opportunity uh to see you know uh, how they are willing you know so when we when we give these opportunities the what happens is that people are one 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 thing that happens is they are they are they are exposed to ministry they are exposed to a level of ministry which they may not have seen right they or they may not have stepped into for some people it's new so give them an opportunity uh for some people maybe they are they've done it before right and uh, it could be a way of for them to again keep doing it continue doing it and also to receive additional inputs and corrections and and so on so uh, the thing is you know like most people are very comfortable you know comfortable to they are satisfied to just come attend and go you, know, you will see that right for most people the majority um are comfortable they just want to come attend uh not take up any other responsibilities for whatever reason you know they have their work they have their responsibilities at home and they don't want to commit to anything more than that right so uh, it's very few who are who are actually really passionate and who are you know saying okay uh, what should i do what can i do what can i do more what more can i do and these are easy to uh, you know identify and also they are very willing to do things so um, we need to definitely you know get them started on these things like to take them out with their, with us when we are ministering and maybe we are visiting other cell group members at homes and and maybe you know then there is a need for prayer maybe someone sick you know they are willing to come but then we do notice that most are unwilling in the sense they are comfortable to come attend the meeting and go attend the cell group meeting and go but uh, beyond that uh, they don't want to stretch okay so so it's good to challenge them and say okay why don't you do this right uh, i need you to help me out in this so and encourage them and say they might have some fears no i actually last time i tried it it didn't work out it didn't you know it didn't happen the way i wanted it to so you know i don't want to do it again so they might have you know, a lot of excuses and maybe valid reasons right you know uh, it didn't work maybe they were not equipped so address that okay you know why don't you try this out uh, and and uh, give those responsibilities in 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 small doses right small uh, less critical responsibilities and as they build strength in that area then we can give them some more 
right? So what happens is um, uh, we need to establish, we need to make sure that people have a heart to minister. Okay, only then we can actually develop, right? Um, so we give them the opportunities, you expose them to the needs that are there, and and then uh, as we slowly, you know, give them the input, then they will be able to come to a place of being developed or wanting to be developed as as ministers. Okay, so uh, we do this. Step three is to make the challenge, right? Uh, get them started on uh, leadership, get them to commit to cell group leadership, um, challenge them, share with them, and also encourage them, affirm the things that are there in them, right? So to see that, hey, you remember you when we went to this, you did this, you ministered in this way, you shared this, it was good. Or you facilitated that life group, the way you handled that, it was good. The way you answered these questions, the way you moved um, to be, you know, uh, from one thing to the other, um, the way you involved everyone in the discussion, um, and the way, you know, uh, you solved that particular problem you know that person was uh, going on talking and then you you made sure that equal time was given to all the others to share so you know that was that was really good so you did a good job so when we affirm what they had done and uh, so the, for their they for them also they may not have realized it but then they realize okay maybe god is doing something in me god is doing something through me and he has given me these abilities and I'm growing in these abilities. Yes, um, I realize that I have a heart for ministry and therefore let me commit to being developed or you know, being trained uh, to, to take up leadership, right? The thing is, some might be there who want the leadership or who want to be cell group leaders uh, saying, give me an opportunity, but they don't have a heart for for people okay uh, they are very excited about the position they are very excited about the title right they say i want to be i want this thing uh, you know, can i be a leader can i be uh, can i do this uh, they are very excited they are very interested but they still don't have a heart for helping people it's more about what can i do what can i you know what can i how can i share this um, which is again good, the passion and the interest, zeal is good, but it's not that people might be helped. It's 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 something like, okay, I want to do this. I want to, you know, share this, um, focus on me. Okay, Maybe they've learned something. Maybe they've learned something new. So it's a very thin line, right? So we need to develop such people as well, uh, encourage those people as well, uh, but without giving them you know the leadership position right we need to uh, develop them and, and and see that the other aspect of being able to relate to people you know, being able to uh, have a heart for people you know that needs to be developed as well and then um, you can you know entrust such people with um, leadership right cell group leadership we're talking about so yeah so we do that and um, and then we take them through the cell group leaders training. Okay, so it's it's good, you know. So here, see, we have, you know, we use this material for the training so that people uh, understand the vision and also, you know, get trained as a, as a leader, um, and also um, to oversee, you know, some of the things that um, cell group leaders do and for some time, and then. They are fine on their own, right? So, but from time to time, just to keep in touch and so on. So, um, you know, any other place, any other cell group, you can do the same thing, right? So, the 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 fear of you know people breaking away and uh, and maybe you know bringing in destructive or you know uh, um, even heresies, right? all that happens because the foundation has not been laid in raising up leaders okay so we, we just pick them up for you know maybe for their talent 
we look at outwardly the ability to maybe preach or teach. Uh, maybe they are gifted, anointed in some areas. Uh, they are skilled. And then we give them the responsibility. Right, without establishing a relationship, without getting to know them, we just see this and then we give them the responsibility. And what happens later is that uh, you know they they have not really understood the vision. They have not really understood the heart of what uh, cell group ministry is all about. And then it becomes difficult later. You know, whatever we try to bring in and share and say um, they see it as a why 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 is this person not allowing me to do my work right but the fact is they have not really understood the vision right? the foundation itself is shaky so you know everything that they do you know we'll have to constantly correct constantly check uh, and then they also don't like that and then you definitely you know as a leader since you brought them in you also you know you're you're not happy right so so it doesn't help so this is um, it, but however if we lay a foundation and we lay uh, you know or share the expectations very clearly that is this is what is expected and and also walk with them right journey with them then uh, uh, this is this becomes a very rewarding uh, ministry because it is uh, you know we have strong leaders who have the same heart uh, uh, and the vision and everything is is in place and they're doing it well right uh, they are uh, whatever they're doing they want to build up the people okay so um, Yes, here and there, you know, we're all uh, works in progress. We're not perfect people, so there will be certain things um, with regarding regarding to the method or regarding uh, you know uh, wrong motivation and so on, which can be corrected, right? and that is that is fine. And they're also in a position to receive correction. To they know they know the heart of the leader you know, because you've established that relationship, uh, having spent time and having you know, uh, shared uh, why you want to do it. And, and the fact that they understand that, hey, this is for my good. It's not that this person, he or she is putting me down or wanting to, <clears throat> you know, wanting to restrict my, the, the, you know, the gifts and abilities that God has given me. But really, this person wants me to thrive and flourish. Right? And that is why this person is doing it. So uh, bringing in correction, bringing in feedback, right? So the person also understands that. Okay, so so that's the thing. So that is the right way to do it. Okay, um, that's the correct way to do it. And uh, when we do that, then definitely um, it will be very rewarding. The work will be fruitful. Okay, so the fourth thing is to um, help start the cell group. Okay, well, we have given the training. We have, uh, and in the training, they have understood everything. Um, they've shared the information, everything. Uh, we need to give them time to, you know, digest that information, right? Make it part of their life, make it part of their, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, the way they minister, etc. Right? But the thing is that uh, we need to walk with them or help them. There needs to be some hand holding as they start. Okay. Um, so how does it? Uh, how do we do that? So we um, maybe we can attend the cell group, you know, some practical things, attend the cell group that they start, help them get started, but not really interfere. You know, see what happens is um, many times, you know, uh, people uh, say, okay, Pastor, why don't you come and be part of the cell group and, um, you know, attend, uh, et cetera. And uh, what happens is when when you go there as a leader, you know, maybe as another cell group leader, um, they would turn to you and say, "Okay, why don't you, you know, why don't you share? Why don't you lead worship? Why don't you, you know, lead the cell group meeting?" Right. So it is at these times when you say, "Okay, you no, know, I've come to be part of it. Why don't you lead?" You know, because you've already, uh, you know, you've already gone through the training. I'd like you to lead. Right. You you've seen how we, I've done it. And now it's 
know, you 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 go ahead, you do it. I'll be there. I'll be there to fill in whenever there's a need, or I'll be there to you know, help assist if it's required. But you know, you do the main thing, right? You do the work, and I'll I'll just be there to attend, and we'll talk about it later. You know, after the group, anything areas of improvement, we'll talk about it later. But you go ahead and you do it, right? So so that will that will be really um, helpful. And uh, it's beneficial for the for the new leader. Okay. Okay. So here are some things. A, a good cell leader does not do everything himself or herself. Okay. A good cell group leader learns to delegate, right? Um, give opportunities for others. Okay. While not, you know, um, the, the word is abdicate in the sense while not giving up the the, the leadership, you know, ability or position. You know. The reason the, um, the church has appointed a person as a cell group leader is because they see, you know, you've seen the potential, you've seen the heart, you've seen the maturity, and then train them. Now, the thing is, uh, in wanting to delegate, the leader should not, you know, give up that responsibility of cell group leadership. Right? So, and say, okay, uh, the main work that I'm called to do, I, that also I've delegated. No, you know, there are other things that can be delegated, but uh, the whole, the, the leadership aspect lies with the cell group leader. Right? Okay, so there's the cell group leader makes demands of cell members, makes them stretch beyond uh, themselves and, and also, uh, you know, go beyond their comfort level so that they can reach higher goals now that's something that we need to understand right as long as um, as we are comfortable as long as we are comfortable in our you know in the things that we do we will never reach beyond uh you know or reach for other things and achieve or accomplish um, higher goals right? as long as we are like comfortable in our own and the things that we're doing right now if you're not trying out new things if you're not reaching out uh, or reaching for you know um, some some big goals right so you will continue to be doing what we're doing so as a cell group leader um, we need to be able to encourage challenge and also enable people to stretch beyond what is comfortable Okay, um, so we need to, of course, lead by example. Like Paul says, in, um, you know, to Timothy, he says, you know, be an example and let your life speak. Right, be an example in word and faith and in everything, in love. Uh, be an example. So, so also when it comes to commitment. Right. So, when you say, okay, uh, I, I want you to be committed to to the cell group ministry or you know attend the cell group be committed um, people need to see commitment in in our lives first right? if we are not committed if you know if we don't show up uh, after we've you know let's say we, uh, we say okay cell group meeting happens every friday um, at this time and if we show up late Right. Maybe the cell group is meeting in church or maybe it's a common place. But if we are not committed, if we cancel at the last minute, uh, then people will not be committed themselves. Right? We cannot make a demand on commitment uh, if people see that we are not committed. Okay, We, we, we need to first demonstrate it. Okay. And then complacency. That's the other word. The commitment is one word that we saw or as attribute aspect uh, that we see uh, needs to be displayed uh, by the cell group leader. The other thing that that the cell group leader should not have is complacency. Okay, complacency is uh, uh, is you know being lazy, cooling down, right? Uh, and there's no fire. It's the opposite of being passionate. And become complacent and uh, and um, 
And being too relaxed, you know, it does not mean that one should not be at peace, it does not mean that one should not be content. But if, if one is becoming lukewarm, like in the work of God, in the relationship with God, then that reflects in all areas of life, right? So uh, a good cell group leader does not tolerate complacency. You know? So the thing is, you know, all these characteristics are very contagious. People see it and it rubs off on them, right? So if a leader is passionate, if a leader is committed, then those in the cell group will also uh, receive some of that. You know, there's an impartation of that. So they also you know, want to be or they're inspired to be committed. Uh, they are encouraged and motivated to, you know, to be passionate. Okay, so these are things that are very, very contagious. So we need to have that right attitude and these attributes in our own lives. Okay, you know, this is so true. This uh, quote by Oliver Goldsmith, people seldom improve when they have no other model but themselves to copy. Okay, so if you have a good role model, then people are inspired to follow and and do and 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 change for the better right okay so the next aspect we see is the leader as a coach okay the leader as a coach so the leader we've seen here is uh, you know is equipping is training is raising up others and uh, one very important aspect of a, uh, of a leader is that of a coach. You know, now what is the difference, um, or what is the importance of a coach? Okay, see, um, this uh, some of these thoughts are from this book, Leader as Coach. Um, uh, very helpful. So you can you know you can check this book out. You know, if you maybe if you see it online or on or on Kindle. Um, so the thing is this, you know, why do we why do we coach people? Okay, so what does a coach do? If you look at a sport, if you look at uh, you know a team, a coach always builds the strength in people individually so that the collectively the team is strong. Right? That's what the coach does. The coach enables the team enables in the individuals to keep going for higher goals right to keep improving continuously so the coach is is not satisfied if the person is okay you know at one level of uh, capability you know they are able to do this the coach is not satisfied the coach wants to push them to a higher level right because they see Okay, there's great potential to push them to the next level, right? And um, so, when when a coach does that, then there are people who want to be coached, who want to be helped in that manner, right? So that's what. So coaching is the process of equipping people with the tools, knowledge, and opportunities they need in order to develop themselves and become even more effective, right? So the coaches, what do they do? Right, they equip, right? give people the equipment. In order, you know, I equip to with with what is required for them. You know, with the knowledge, with the expertise, uh, with the resources, and the opportunities, so that they develop with that. They take that and they develop. They become stronger. Right? So, uh, coaches develop people, but not directly, but indirectly by equipping them. Right? So some things to do when we are coaching: work one on one. Okay. So this, these are some things that we have seen already. You know, when we say, "Okay, build a relationship with cell group members." So this is what a coach does: work one on one. You know, there are there are things that we do collectively when we minister to in a cell group. But also, there are things that we need to do one on one, right? So maybe you've always been, if you've always been ministering uh, to the group, 
maybe it's time to step back a little and see, okay, uh, these 12 people who are there, these, you know, these 10 or 12 people who are there now, uh, to look at the, them individually and see, you know, what is it that is, um, that they are strong at? What is it that they need to grow into? What are some of the challenges that they are facing, right, individually? Okay, person A, person B, person C has these challenges, you know, pray about those challenges and God will give those uh, ideas and strategies and, and things that, you know, as a leader, you need to bring into their lives, right? So it's a, you see that it, it takes time. It's a lot of hard work. Uh, it takes commitment from, from our side, a lot of investment, um, you know, of time and uh, effort and so on, but it's worth it, right? So when you look at the team as individuals and say, okay, let me just work one on one. Of course, the person needs to be willing. You know, we need to understand that. We cannot force these things to happen, right? But we we are, we are looking at, uh, we, we are assuming that, yes, everyone in the cell group uh, or most people in the cell group are willing to be trained, are willing to be coached. Right, so uh, they have seen your life. They have seen the heart of. They've experienced the heart of God, and they've you know they've been inspired. They've been motivated. They've come to a place of saying, "Yeah, I need to grow in order to you know help others grow." So you know, I want to be equipped. I want to be trained in all this. Right, so they've come to that place. So take make use of those opportunities. You know, as a coach, make use of those opportunities. Uh, you know, uh, uh, be alert and aware of those opportunities in order to help people. You know, um, so say when we say one-on-one -on -one moments, coaching moments, it's not, it's not like you make people sit down and you know give a long lecture or long sermon. It's not that. Right? Uh, it's not that you sit down and say, okay, let me. Uh, I want you to listen to the to me for the next half an hour and, and give them one full download of you know whatever you learn. No, it's not that. It is uh, it is to bring in your experience. It is to bring in uh, point people to the word you know, and share it in a manner uh, that they understand. Maybe there are some problems that needs to be corrected, or I mean, some things uh, attitude that needs to be corrected. Um, so there is the leaning on God to bring in the right word to that person and being alert to those coachable moments, you know, because people, you know, it's like this, people are not always able or re ready to receive. Okay, they're not ready to receive. Uh, you need to find those moments. You know, there could be some times when they are you know, their mind is on something else. Maybe they're, you know, something, maybe their work, their office, right? Or maybe there is a, uh, you know, problematic child in the family. Maybe the spouse, uh, you know, is a problem, is not saved, or, you know, has been abusive, etc. cetera. Uh, maybe they, find, you know, having some financial things. So financial challenges, and, and these things are on the top of their mind. And here you are trying to, you know, talking, trying to talk to them about cell group leadership, and they're not in a place to receive it, right? So find those moments when they are ready to receive and use those moments uh, and use them well. Right? Take advantage of those opportunities right? So when we work one-on-one. -on -one. So maybe sometimes we need to create those moments, right? We need to address the other issues address the other things and suggest solutions for some of the things that they are facing in order to you know help them get settled right okay and the second thing uh, how does a coach uh, help or some things that we can do when we are coaching is um, to guide people to learn for themselves okay um you know rather than you know we showing we teaching all the time you know uh, build some patterns or build some habits uh, or point people to that so that they can, uh, you know, learn on their own based on what they're seeing in the word, what, what 
their you know, they can learn on their own so they're not always depending on others right orchestrate resources and opportunities now this could be you know um, maybe you've learned something you've read something you've seen something you watched some video uh, which was helpful for you spiritually for your growth share that share the resources uh, and also maybe you 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 know you attending this meeting and you found that to be useful uh, you know this speaker and this particular topic and you know take them along right so um, so or invite them right so what happens is that uh, you are you know we are equipping them to learn right uh, and also we are uh, we are encouraging them and uh, whatever input you are receiving and they are also receiving and then they are growing okay so uh, opportunities also the same way not just the resources but opportunities right maybe there's an opportunity for them to serve opportunity to share um you know orchestrate that or create those uh, moments for them okay okay here are some practical things okay uh, two minute two more minutes so we'll yeah look so here are some practical things right when it comes to strategies for coaching okay um we again go back the first leave again go back to this thing of forging a partnership meaning we have establishing a relationship we are establishing a strong relationship um, of trust of understanding of uh, you know healthy communication of honor and respect so that people are willing to work people are willing to you know walk with you okay so so the, you know this is very very important right um, this is very very important it's very crucial um, because uh, without this the other things may or may not work right without this strong foundation so establish that second one is to inspire commitment okay so commitment with some people can be very strong but for some it can be lacking um so inspire commitment right motivate inspire commitment let people see how you are committed and and also maybe share stories of of commitment uh, and and then they will be committed themselves right because uh, leadership requires commitment right uh, uh, i'm i'm talking generally about leadership and specifically about self group ministry now you know uh, when we were leading self groups you know, there's not every time that you will feel like leading a self group or hosting a self group like sometimes you're tired you know you've been doing a lot of other things you know emotionally tired physically tired it happens right but it's it's those times it's those moments when you when you say okay i will do it anyway right i will do it anyway and i know that it's not my physical strength and ability and depending on god but emotionally i don't feel like it but i will do it anyway you know i we will host you know we've already committed to it we've said that this is the day this is the time let's let's do it anyway okay so um so these are ways by which we inspire commitment in others right because commitment is uh, very very important okay okay so we'll take a break and uh, we'll come back after the break <laughs> 